everyone, it's that time again. It is Beer 30 with your host, me, Big Dub, doing a little something different today. Going to do a little education on IPAs. I know a lot of people are scared of IPAs, maybe love them, but they are kind of the rage right now. You see them t taking up a lot of mini space on uh, at breweries and on the restaurants. So let's just talk about them, let you know, and then we'll try three of them right here in front of you. L one of the biggest misnomers when it comes to IPAs is that they're... People think they're always bitter or they're a higher ABV. That is not always true. Most modern uh, IPAs now, they are hoppy and not all of them are bitter though, but they explore kind of using all the different hops to bring out fruity flavors from those different hops. So that's kind of what you can see in IPAs. Uh, there's a long list and titles of them and I'll go through that as we try. But as you can see in front of me, I have Pipeworks Brewing. They're a mini unicorn. I do love the label here, uh, Hop Butcher. Their Tavern Cut, and another one from Pipe Works, their unofficial beer sponsor. Now, I tried to find the artist for the uh, the cans here because I love them, and I want to give them shout-outs for the work that they did because these cans are awesome. Uh, they're beautiful. Uh, so if Pipe Works or Hot Butcher or if anyone does know, please uh, comment below and give a shout-out to these artists because this can work is awesome. Uh, so we'll start with the first one from Pipe Works, the Mini Unicorn. So this one here. They're using different hops. They have the Citra, uh, the Simcoe, the Mosaic, and Amarillo hops. So they're going four different hop styles here. So that would be not a single hop. Single hopped IPAs, you'll see that on the menu quite a bit. Uh, they only use one hop during the whole process. So maybe they're using Citra hops during the whole time or the Mosaic itself. But this one, as I, as I told you, using four different ones as it is. Um, something that you see lately too when it comes to the IPAs is something called a Session IPA. And you might be wondering exactly what is Session IPA. Uh, basically all it really is meaning uh, for you is just a lower and a less alcohol by volume content. Uh, you're still going to get the same flavors. Uh, you're just getting less hops and lower ABV. So that's what you can expect when you see a Session IPA on the menu. Looking at this one. Uh, you can see a nice clear golden color and that's something else with ipas they could be nice golden color or they could be a thicker yellow. it just really all depends on the process the kind of hops they use and we'll go through that as we go through the uh, show here but first let's start with this one see on the nose i am getting some nice fruity notes uh they seem to be more citricky so uh let's give it a go starts out very smooth then on the back end those hops comes with a little bit of bitterness it's not the overwhelming bitterness a lot of people think when they hear IPA something like I said that used to be the case but that's really changed uh, lately so yeah you get the smoothness up front then you're getting the hop flavors uh, you do taste a little differentness a little fruitiness some sweetness from it. And then the bitterness does come in at the end, but it's not overpowering and overwhelming like most people think IPAs used to be. Now, if you are looking for something that is more overpowering, that is more higher APV, then you wanna look for a, a double IPA or imperial IPA. They basically mean the same thing. Basically, they're using more hops, sometimes double the amount. And for with doing that, they gotta basically use more malt too, which causes the higher alcohol content when they are making a double IPA. So we'll move these aside here. We'll bring the tavern out front. We'll talk about that one here in a second, but going down. Now there's many other things you might see when it comes to the IPAs. You might see a dry hop, you might see a wet hopped, and you're confused maybe, what, is, what does that even mean? So dry hopped IPAs, basically what they're doing is they're steeping that during the fermentation process of the brewing instead of when it is uh, doing the look, liquid boil. reason they do this, it really amplifies the uh, fruity, piney, candy sweet flavors that come from the different hops. So they might wait until the beer is actually fermenting to put those hops in, let that steep while it's fermenting, then pull them out to get the flavor. Uh, most of the time you'll see the, the dry hopped, like I said, wet hop is basically when they do it normally, when they just throw it in there, during the uh, water boil at the beginning process of making the beer. Tavern, tavern cut here. I do love the uh, pizza slice and how it looks. This is Citra and a Vic Secret Hop Double IPA. So this one should have a higher alcohol content as I just told you with a double IPA. 
and you should expect kind of a different pour and color than we had from the Pipeworks. And as you can see, it is thicker looking. It's not as clear, not as easy to see through. And that's because of all the hops that were used and all the, the malt that was used to make it. So when I go to taste this one, I should definitely taste a lot more hoppiness, more alcohol content uh, with it. Uh, so, like, and then there is, like I'm talking about, the double and triple dry hopped. They're basically the same thing as dry hopped. People just throw that in there. Maybe they're doing it twice. Maybe they're doing three times just to say how many times they're doing it during the steeping. But there's really no difference between a dry hopped IPA or double and triple dry hopped. It's just kind of a little marketing ploy that, that might get you on the hook to try that beer out. Moving to the nose, this is very sweet on the nose. It's very inviting. It's actually a, less bitter than the first beer, but it is more hoppy. You do get more of the hops flavors. It is actually sweeter. But it does have the heavier mouthfeel, uh, as you would expect. And as you can see just by looking at it, when you see a thicker beer, you're expecting the heavier mouthfeel. But it's sweeter, goes down smooth, and it does not punch you at all with some bitterness. You do get some hoppy flavors, but it's not punching you and drawing you back with the amount of bitterness that some expect, again, from an IPA. Lastly, look, I finally have an unofficial beer sponsor, guys. It's great. It's actually Pipeworks Unofficial Beer Sponsor IPA. Uh, last thing that you do see sometimes, and it's it's very rare to see these, is a fresh hopped IPA. Now you're wondering what that is. Why is it fresh? What makes it fresh? The reason they can call it is the hops go from the vine to the brewery and into the boil in under 24 hours. Uh, it cannot be called a fresh hopped IPA unless it goes from vine to boil in less than 24 hours. So you know you're getting the most fresh uh, sweetness uh, that you can from any of the hops at that point. So if you are looking for something that is right off the vine and right into the boil, find a fresh hopped IPA and I think you will notice a difference in flavor. Going with the Pipeworks here, the unofficial uh, beer sponsor, they're using Citra, uh, Strinian Wolf, and Syro Cascade hops. So again, a different strain of hops. And as it being just a normal IPA here, you can see it's more, more clear and not as thick. It kind of falls right in the middle of the two though. So this one definitely smells more hoppiness. I definitely get a strong hint of hops right on the nose. But you don't get as much of it when you're drinking it. Definitely stronger nose on the hops. When it comes into your mouth, you get a little sweetness to it. Then it starts hitting you with a little bitterness, but it's not, again, it's not overwhelming. It's not the high IBU count that a lot of people used to think about when it came to IPAs. So let me line these up for you. You can see all of them next to each other. So uh, thanks for checking in. I'm going to rate these real quick, but I hope this did help you understand the differences that are out there with IPAs, what to expect from them, how it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, and don't be scared to try them. If you're someone that's always been scared of bitterness or extra hoppiness and you're like, I just can't do IPAs, branch out, try them. They're not what you think they are. There's some that are still that way, that are really hoppy, really bitter, but majority of them anymore have nice sweetness to them, get you with a little hoppiness, and they're not that heavily alcohol as you would think. Going down the line, the Pipeworks first one here, their Mini Unicorn, really enjoyed that one. Very smooth, 8 out of 10. The Tavern Cut from Hot Butcher for the World, a little thicker and surprisingly a little sweeter and didn't have as much hops as this one. I enjoyed that one too, 8 out of 10, but my favorite tonight was the unofficial beer sponsor from Pipeworks. Really did enjoy the hoppiness on the nose and not overwhelming with the flavor. I'm going nine out of 10 on that one. So please feel free, go out and try IPAs. Don't be scared of them. And if you are, do flights. Try a little smaller one so you can try to venture out and try all the different IPA styles that are out there. Uh, if you like what you see, like what you hear, please subscribe, like, share, and hit the little bell and get the alerts. Uh, enjoy your beers, cheers, and we'll see you at the next Beer 30.